It's on a call, 62. Okay. Still on hold, go to webinar. Currently, staff and everybody is available to being speaking to enter audience. Keep the conference call limited to staff. Click on now. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Oh, it does not give me right now any option. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Next Rail's This Friday's Power Hour. And the topic for the Power Hour is flexible modeling using Creo Parametric 2.0. My name is Swapnil Mehta. I am Lead Applications Engineer at Nextra. Let me first give you some background about myself. I have done my Master's from San Jose State University, having four plus years of experience in various industries like Cisco and Lab 126. I have gained knowledge in designing and various industrial aspects uh, in designing chassis, enclosures, consumer electronics products like Kindle e-reader, Kindle Fire tablets, and all, all those things. I have been with NextRail for more than two years, and as a part of my duties, uh, I have trained 50 plus, I have t I've delivered 50 plus training classes and technical demos on various PDC products. I do have skills or I have my product portfolio under uh, Pro Engineer Warfare 4, 5, Creo 1, Creo 2 and the various topics like sheet metal, surfacing, and top-down design. On the top of that, I also have skills and knowledge for windshield PDM link 9.0, 9.1, and 10.0. On the top of that, I have delivered many lunch and lunch uh, uh, demos or tips and tricks, you, uh, as you want to say, for uh, Creo and windshield uh, products. So this is one of the uh, one of the power hour session, which is another demo that also includes in my uh, portfolio. And today we are going to go ahead with the flexible modeling using Creo Parametric 2.0. Again, my contact number is 408-986-0200, and the extension is 39. You can also contact me on the email address swapnilm at nextrail.com. I will again show this slide again. So. Uh, for future or for you, if you have any questions that you want to shoot me personally, you can ask me on, you can send me on this email address. So let's begin with today's agenda. Today I'm going to talk about, first I'll introduce what is next, how exactly it, it can add the value and how we are added reseller to the customers on the West Coast. I'll let you know something about powers as well, like our power, uh, power hours or the future power hours and what happens to all those power hours that we do. On the top of that, we also run the instructor-led classes and the courses. We have a list of courses that also. After that, I'll start, uh, start going ahead with the presentation and the demonstration on the flexible modeling uh, where I'm going to talk about pain points, benefits, better user experience, user functions uh, in, inside the flexible modeling and then I'll show the demonstrations. At the end, we'll open up our Q&A session. Feel free to ask me any questions regarding today's demonstration or if you have any other questions regarding PDC products, please uh, shoot me an email or you can call me or you can ask me after the demonstration as well. Who we are? Who is or what is next? So our headquarters is in Santa Clara. We, as we were established or we started or we were founded in 2001. We basically deal with product development and product management solutions and mainly for the PDC products like uh, Creo, Pro Engineer, Windchill, Madcat, etc. Combined, we have 50 plus years of experience uh, in technical management, consulting, and training. We have many experienced instructors in our team who, can, who are uh, teaching the classes for, for the longest time and they are expert in that area. We have 500 plus local customers with dedicated account and technical management teams. 
we have local coverage and support as well, which helps our customers a lot so that they can reach me at any time uh, with the feasible hours, uh, working hours. And if needed, we can have the on-site visit as well so we can give the personal attention to our customers. We are the largest PDC seller on the Western region and number one windshield seller in the Western region. Now the power hours past and present, we used to have power hours uh, in our past also and we again have started in uh, current time. Uh, all the power hour session, we do record them and uh, we upload. We are uploading right now. We have started doing that on our next year website. Uh, so you, you have, if in case you miss any of the power hour session, you can go ahead and you can uh, download those uh, W. Windows Media Player files over there from there and you can uh, view it at your convenient time. These are a couple of topics uh, which are for the future. We have uh, optimizing productivity with Sketcher and the Creo View and all other different topics are coming up. So please stay tuned and do not forget to register for the Power Hours. Definitely I can tell you that this is going to help you a lot and increase your efficiency in your designing work. If you want to see the whole, the complete list of our Power Session, please go to the URL mentioned on the, in the uh, presentation slide. As I mentioned, along with all the power session, we also have the instructor-led courses. So we have very skilled instructors who have been teaching for more than five years over here. And uh, we have 45 years of combined experience with PDC products. So you can, you can gauge uh, how much expertise we will have in our, or we do have in our instructor-led courses. These are the couple of classes which are we are offer, offering and we are which are coming up. Uh, we offer more than that, like customized training classes as well. So for the particular company or for the specific company, you would like to have customized classes. We can do that as well. But if you want to see the complete list of cl classes or the courses that we offer, please go to the nexter.com forward slash training. So let's start uh, today's presentation and let's start today's topic, which is about flexible modeling. Like I mentioned that I have experience with Cisco and Lab126 and uh, in other customers' companies as well. Uh, the main pain points for us is since everything is going glo uh, global and everything is globalized, we have our design units in the United States of America and we have our manufacturers or our vendors at some other place, maybe in Asia, right? What are the main things that are the pain points? The very first thing is to get the step and I just file and work on it. When you get your step and I just file from your vendors or from your manufacturers, you always have trouble modifying it. Till now, let's say you are using uh, ProEngineer Warfare 5, you might find it difficult, a little bit difficult or a little bit more work in order to change even a small thing, right? This is what we are going to talk about, how we can resolve it and how actually we can make our work efficient. On the top of that, when you get the file from your vendors and manufacturers, again as I mentioned, they might have designed their uh, model really nicely who, with the proper design intent or sometimes it happens that you might get the files which are poorly designed or in the other case very rigidly designed. So whenever you want to make any modification it becomes really difficult for you to make changes on that. Like most of the times you get uh, uh, step and just files and you work on that so that time it's a difficult but let's say you are getting the native pro engineer or Creo files and that time also, uh, you might have problems changing a couple of features because of the parent-child relationship or maybe it's designed very poorly or it's designed too constrained. Right? So those are the pain points that we have which consumes most of our time, most of our energy uh, to resolve those things. And today, I'm going to show you the solution for those pain points. So what are the things, uh, what are the benefits are there which flexible modeling uh, offers us in uh, Creo 2.0. Like I mentioned, imported data, which we also call dumb data, which is steps and IJ, uh, step and IGS files. What we are going to do is we are going to change non-native files and make the modifications in the geometry and, our, and the features. Like I mentioned that sometimes you get the very poorly designed or very extra rigidly designed uh, uh, files, the design CAD models. Flexible modeling will allow you to make changes to those files without keeping the parent-child or without bothering about the parent-child relationship and just having the quick changes to that. Other thing when we have 
all the models are ready and ready to go. And sometimes we have the last minute changes from our higher management or uh, uh, upper upper organization, right? And the last time changes, we just simply do not care for at that time for the parent-child relationship. You just simply want to move a couple of features, want to make the modification, and present it. You can definitely take care of those parent-child relationship later or the parametric relationship later. But at that time, you just want to have quickly modification onto your model. Flexible model model will allow you to achieve all of those goals. So by introducing, let me introduce a little bit about the flexible modeling. What are the features, what are the functions that it offers? It basically is divided into two or three parts. So very first thing is a shape-based selection. What exactly that allows or that helps us is that if let's say I select only one surface, which is a ball surface or the cut surface, and flexible modeling will give me, as you see over here, it's a ribbon interface, and it will give you all the options. If you select only one surface, and you say select with the secondary, it will select the whole boss or the whole cut surface. So that kind of uh, advantage or benefit it gives us, so you do not need to be extra careful to select all the surfaces. You can just simply go ahead and trust the flexible modeling functionality. The next option, the next function that it allows us to move. So many times when we get the step and ideas file and we want to increase the cut depth or let's say we want to increase the gap between two geometries or two features, we go through like create the new extrude sketch and then we cut it, we extrude it and still we do not get what we want. This function, move function will just simply allow us to select the surface and you can move in any direction. And if you see in the picture on the right hand side, you can see that there's a drag handle and it's a drag uh, rotation uh, movement also you can uh, give it. So let's say there is a surface I want to just move it linearly or let's say I want to give it uh, an angle. For example, let's say you want to create a draft of, out of any surface uh, from the S7 Agile first. You, using the move function you can just simply move it and you can define the angle as well. Let me make very important point over here. If you see on the left hand side where my cursor is right now, you can move it non-parametrically in the sense you do not want to uh, define the distance or the, uh, or the dimension that how much I'm moving my surface. You just want to move it freely. You can use the first option. If, let's say I want to move it parametrically in the sense I want to define the exact distance, you can do that as well by defining on the dimension, by clicking on the dimension. And the third option, let's say you are in an assembly and you want to move any component and you want to define the constraint with any other component, you can have that assembly constraint as well. Remember all of these things I'm talking about in step and ideas file. You can do all these functions in the native profile as well. Okay, but I'm just trying to show you the advantage that so these all functions we were not able to do in the step and I just filed till now, right? Now you can do all of those functionalities using uh, flexible modeling module in Creo 2.0. Another functionality is offset. Again over here you can select the surface and offset will always be parametric. That means whenever you select the surface it will always give you the dimension that hey how much dimension you want to move up or move down. You can just simply select the surface and it will go linearly in the offset function. Next function which is my favorite function and again I would say that this is really important for the ID designers. Uh, this function basically does it, it replaces the surface with the selecting surface. That means it's substitute. So let's say some surface you do not like it. In this example on the right hand side if you see the picture, I have one conical surface and on the top of that I have uh, created a spherical kind of a, a circular surface over here. So let's say if I want to replace this conical surface with this uh, spherical surface, I can easily do that. And if you see on the top picture, I have replaced it and uh, this is my final product over here. So just imagine that, that if you are an ID designer and your design engineers are asking that, hey, we uh, manufacturers are saying that the conical design is not useful, we have to go with the spherical. For the ID users, ID designers, it becomes very easy, they just simply create the new surface and just, just simply implement that and substitute that. Again, you are staying in a native profile and you are making all this modification. So you do not have to move back or switch back between different CAD models to do that. Next thing, which is also I have found very frequently used and uh, which is 
kind of really big pain points in uh, uh, as a CAD designer. So let's say you are getting a file from uh, some other CAD tools other than Pro Engineer or Creo, and uh, your manufacturer or vendor has defined some radius. You want to remove the radius, or let's say you want to change the value of the radius. You can do it really easily using this flexible model uh, functionality. You can also mirror your component. Let's say I have a boss and I want that boss on the other side as well. I can simply select the geometry. And like you do in the native uh, CRE or Pro Engineer file, select the datum, uh, datum plane or any plane uh, which you want to mirror about. And just simply using mirror tool, you can go ahead and do that. Let's say I have a hole or the cut and I want to increase or decrease the radius of that particular feature. I can do it analytically in the sense I can, uh, when I select those surface and I say I want to reduce or increase it, it will give me the present value and you can make changes uh, to the uh, value of that. Again, it becomes a parametric like I mentioned if you provide the dimension. You can also identify identify the patterns in your step or IGES file, in your dump data, and you can have modification. So if let's say I have five holes and if I want to make changes to that, it's an actual pattern and I want to make changes to that and uh, improve the or increase the number of holes from five to six. I can do it in step and I just file. Again, I'm, I would like to emphasize on those things because till now it was a really big uh, pain point for us to make changes or make all these small small changes in the step and I just file. At the same time, I can also define the symmetry also. I have two feet feature or two geometry and I want to define the symmetry between them so that if I make changes to one feature, the other feature automatically up, get updated. I can do that as well. And this function is widely used and really useful uh, a function uh, which uh, flexible modeling is offering. You can select any surface and you can remove it. So in the sense, I'll show you in the demonstration you know, in a minute, you can select a hole and let's say you want to fill that hole and you want to make a solid surface, you can just simply select the surface and say remove it and that will remove that particular hole. Again, whatever the functionalities I'm showing you over here and whatever functionalities I will do, all those functionalities will be added in your model tree as a feature. So for the later use, if let's say by mistake you did something or the design changes comes, you can select that particular feature and delete them, suppress them, whatever the actions you would like to do, you can do it. And on the top of that, you can also make edit definition also. So I'm just trying to show you over here that how these functions are just, they behave just like as a native Creo file functions. Even though you're working on the step and IDS files, they are just simply same as a Creo native file function. So this is the presentation, which is the overview of a flexible model. Let's go ahead and uh, jump onto the demonstration. Let me go ahead and open up my first file over here. One important point I would like to make is that if, let's say, you have SOLIDWORKS file, which is a, a native CAD file, you can simply open up that native file into Creo 2.0. I'm mentioning only one tool. You can have that the same functionality for the inventor also. There are a couple of CAD tools that you can apply the same kind of functionalities on them. So you can open up those native files into Creo 2.0. You do not need to or you do not have to create the step or IGES file from those other CAD native files. We can just simply select that and open up in Creo 2.0. All right. So this is my Creo 2.0, and this is the file that I have opened up. For simplicity, I just have opened up a step file in my Creo. And how do I know that? For the people who are not aware of that, on the left hand side on my model tree, I see this imported feature feature over there. Right? That shows me that hey, this file is not the native Pro or Creo file. It might have been created in some other CAD tools and imported as step or IGES file. For the people who are who have not seen Creo 1 or Creo 2 who are still on Pro Engine Warfare 5, I would like to introduce you to this user interface. As you see my cursor moving, this is a ribbon based interface. The advantage of that is I can have all the functionalities under one tab. I do not need to or I do not have to now drop down the list and look for the feature. I can just simply click on the tab and all the related functionalities will be inside of that, as you see over here. Another important part is that search tool. So now you can search for the functions as well. If let's say I'm looking for extrude, I can just simply type the extrude and if I put my cursor over there, 
it will automatically highlight that feature and it will tell me in which tab, under which tab the function resides. By simply clicking on it, it will automatically take me to that particular uh, feature. Just showing you some of the advantages of uh, Creo 2.0, which is the same case in the Creo 1.0 as well. Just a little bit sidetrack. Let's get back to our main presentation again, which is about uh, flexible modeling in Creo Parametric uh, 2.0. All right, so this is my step and I just thought very simple thing I would like to do over here is the very first thing. I would like to get rid of this hole. The hole which was created is not necessary. I would like to get rid of that according to my design change. Over here at the bottom right corner, I have this smart uh, menu function. I can select the multiple uh, different uh, options from here in order to narrow my selection filter. And on the top over here in the ribbon toolbar, I can see the flexible modeling over here. I can select the flexible modeling. This is my ribbon interface. These are my features that uh, flexible modeling offers. On the left hand side that you see everything is grayed out. That means inactive. It will get activated only after you select any geometry or any feature. Before that it will not get uh, activated. These are the functions that you can apply on any of the surface or any of the geometry. Now if I again go back bottom and since I'm working with surfaces, let me go ahead and select the surface region. And now as I mentioned, I would like to go ahead and select this cylindrical surface. My sole purpose is to remove this hole and make a solid out over there. Selecting this uh, surface and just simply click on the remove will allow me to get rid of that hole. As simple as it is. And as I mentioned in my power, uh, PowerPoint uh, slide, on the left hand side in the model tree, it will add that functionality as a feature. So if in future, if I again want that particular hole, I can select and I can say delete or I can do edit definition on that, right? So just behaves like you are working on a native Creo or Pro Engineer file. So that was the one option. Now the second thing, like I mentioned, the rounds. When you have rounds in your geometry, sometimes they are the pain point. So I have round over here. I do two kind of things with the round. Either I want to remove the round completely or I want to change the value of the round. So let me select this round and as I mentioned as soon as you select the geometry or the feature, the option on the left hand side will get activated. Let's say I want to select the, all the rounds, all the tangential rounds along with it. So by just simply clicking on round with secondary will allow me to select all the tangential round as well. So you don't need to be extra careful to select each and everything. Now as I mentioned my sole purpose first purpose is that I want to get rid of the round. Again, simply clicking on the remove will allow me to get rid of that round. Right? There are no rounds over here. The second purpose might be, or second scenario might be, let's say I want to make the changes in the value of the round. So select the round and I can select the edit round will allow me to make changes in the value. So on the top of that it will give me the current value as well. So right now it's 0 0.04. Let me make it 0 0.01. And like you see here, it's a dynamic preview. So as you make changes, it will show you how it is going to look like in this orange preview color. So this, this makes it work a lot easier. You do not have to recreate the round on the top of each other or you do not have to create a sketch in order to get rid of the round and all. So like you see, the value of the round is now 0.1. And on the other side, I have just simply completely removed the round there. Next functionality, which is very useful to me, the gap between these two feature, when I initially designed it, it was like that, but now for the design changes, I want to increase the gap between both of them. So let me go ahead and let me select the surface. Now the function to increase the gap is move. So if I click on the move over here, it will give me this dynamic preview. It gives me this drag handle as well, so I can just simply drag any of the arrow and I can move in that direction. But let's say I want to make it parametrical. That means with respect to any edge or any uh, surface, I would like to make the, dim I, would, I would like to type the dimension and I want to move along with that. So let me go ahead and select this vertex or this edge. Now I can move in that direction and as you see it is providing me the value of it, 0.09 currently. I would like to make changes to that and I would like to make it 0.1. 
I have increased the gap between them and you can see this is my original and this is my new position of that particular uh, feature. There you go. As simple as it is, I can just simply create this and uh, increase the gap and I can make the modification to that. Again, on the left hand side, keep your eye, uh, eyes on the model tree. I'm adding all the functionalities as a feature in my model tree. Next thing is that all this chamfer over here, as, you, as I see on the top of this holes, uh, I see the chamfer. I do not like this chamfer. According to the design change, I have to get rid of all this chamfer. So let me go ahead and select all the chamfers and I would like to get rid of that. There it is. I have no more chamfers. And now I would like to make changes to this hole. But as I mentioned, I would like to have these changes parametrically. That means I would like to first know how much is the radius and then I would like to change it. So let me select this uh, uh, surface and modify analytic will allow me to define the current radius which is 1.06 and I would like to make changes and I would like to make it 0 0.7. It will give me this uh, dynamic preview also and that it is. One thing I forgot is that there was a round over here and I could not and I forgot to remove it. It's okay. You do not need to remove the modify, uh, modify analytic feature and then remove the round and go back again. Just like you do in a Creo native file, go ahead and just simply suppress it. Right? Let me go ahead and let me turn on my suppress feature. You guys are aware of this uh, uh, customization, right? So you can just simply go to the setting and click on the suppress object, which will show the suppress object in your model tree. Now what I will do is, I knew that there was a round over there. Let me go ahead and select the round, remove it. Now there are no rounds there. And now I can go ahead and resume the function that I added before. There you go. So there are no more rounds and the function I applied is still there. Just trying to prove the point that it behaves just as you are working on a native tree or the pro engineer file. At the bottom, I have this uh, surface over here and uh, I would like to increase the depth of it. I can use the move or I can use the offset as well. Offset will allow me to have the dimension on it and it will allow me to change the dimension. I can have the 0 0.06, let me make it 0 0.05. That much how deep I would like to make it from the original position. All right, so that's how you can just simply change the value of it. Very simple. The next thing I would like to do over here is, uh, like I mentioned, that I have these two ramp and uh, they look like a symmetry. So whatever changes I make on the first option, I would like to make the same kind of changes on the other ramp also. So let me go ahead and let me define both of them as a symmetry. So by selecting the surface, I can have the symmetry recognition. Now it's defining both of them as a symmetry. So if I click on the symmetry recognition model in the model tree, you see it will highlight in a uh, green wireframe line that they both have the symmetry. Now I would like to make some changes on one of them. So let me go ahead and select this and I'll select the whole boss. Right? And I would like to change the position of it and I would like to tilt it or increase the slope of the feature. When you do the symmetry, you want to apply the changes on both of, both of them, you have to make sure that you select the symmetry feature to let uh, Creo know that, hey, you want to apply those changes on both the, both the feature, both the geometry. I've selected both of them. I would like to move slightly outward and I would like to increase the slope. Right? And as you see, it will give you the dynamic preview as well. And it is applying on the both, both the options. Again, one, another important point is that right now it is carrying over all the rounds along with it. Do you see the round? So it will automatically update the round. If in case you do not want to have the round along with it, you can just simply uncheck this and none of the rounds will come with it. Just see the dynamic preview of it. Rounds are not coming along with it. So it's completely up to you. It's completely up to your design intent, how exactly you would like to have it. I would like to include the rounds along with it. And just simply keep clicking on done, you will see the changes, right, on your model. 
Another couple of functions, like I mentioned, that uh, symmetry or the mirror and all those kind of things. I would like to show you those things as well. But let me go ahead and let me open up the... I can do all of this thing on this model also, but just to give you exact idea, I would like to change the model over here. Just check out this thing. Let's say I have this model over here. Let me go to the flexible modeling mode and uh, again, surface region. Look at this boss. I select this boss and I'll say boss with secondary. So it will select all of them. And now I would like to move it. So I can move wherever I want and pay attention over here. So as you see over here, it is also updating the round with the interfering surface as well. Right? If I make changes, if I tilt it furthermore, it will automatically update the round and all the feature along with it. So let me go ahead and let me say that. There you go. Very simple. It also includes the round and it it knows that it is interfering some other surface also, so it will update those rounds as well. On the top of that, let's say I want to identify the pattern over here. Let me go ahead and select the surface and I would like to identify the pattern members. It will automatically identify the pattern members and I, let's say I do not want the holes at these two locations. Just like you do in a native Creo file, clicking on those black dots will enable or the disable the feature. Once I do that, and there you go. So I can have those kind of uh, pattern recognition as well. Another thing, the very really good functionality that I would like to select, show you is the mirror tool. So let's say I have this boss over here. Let me select with the secondary. And I would like to make the mirror of it. Simply click on the mirror and like you do in a Creo Native file, you have to define the mirroring plane. And there it is. It will show you the preview. Right? So now you have the uh, preview or the mirror of your original boss. On the top of that, again, as I mentioned, if I do not want the round, I can just simply click on un uncheck that option and I will not have rounds over there. Let me go and say done. So these are the couple of functionalities that you will see over here. It's a round. I can create the pattern. I can create the round. I can create the mirror and all of these things. Let me show you one more example over here, which uh, gives the proper insight of a pattern. First, I have these flanges over here, and they are number of five, and I would like to make changes to the number of them. So before that, before going to that, let me select the surface, and I would like to select everything. Again, make sure if there are tangent edges which are not including in that particular, which are not coming into the bosses secondary. Basically, they are not the secondary feature to that particular uh, geometry. You have to select that manually. I've selected the whole flange, and if I select pattern recognition, it will automatically identify all the pattern members. Now I would like to make changes to that. So go to option and say allow edit. Now it will allow me to change the number of instances as you see on the top and the spacing between them as well. So let me go ahead and make six from five right now. You have, as you see over here, there are five flanges. And the distance between them, obviously, 60 because it's a 360 degree. And there it is. Now you have six flanges uh, and you are making changes to that. The same way you can select this geometry uh, circle and you can have uh, the recognize the pattern of that. So these are the couple of stuff you have over here. The last thing which is my personal favorite and again I say for the ID engineers, ID designers or for the people who are working with a lot of surfacing, this option is going to be really useful to you. In this model, like you see over here, I have this extra surface on the top, right? And I would like to replace this conical surface with this circular surface. For the easiness, again, let me select the surface region. Let me select this surfaces first. Or I can just first identify the function also. So I selected this surfaces, click on substitute. It will tell you that Substituted surface are the surface that I have selected. You see in the uh, in a, a blue color, and which surface you want to su substitute it with? And I'm selecting the next surface. It will give you the dynamic preview as well. So this is how your object is going to look like, right? And once I say done, 
that is it has replaced the new surface it has replaced the existing surface with the new surface so those kind of various changes you can make and you can see now how easy it is to make changes to your stem or IGES file or any of the native in fact native crew or pro, pro engineer file also when you do not want to deal with any parent child relationship or you want to have very quick changes you can absolutely go ahead and make those changes right over here so these are the couple of functionalities again it is a deep subject we can have the a whole class for that uh, but, uh, but due to the time constraint and it's a power hour which we have limited time uh, these are the couple of functions that I could show you right now and uh, very useful to that this is the end of the presentation let me again go ahead and open up my presentation slide with my contact information my contact number is mentioned over here and this is my email address swapnilm at .com. please feel free to ask me any questions uh, now I'm opening up uh, the call for all of you you can go ahead you can type in the questions in the chat option, chat box over here and I'm unmuting all of you so you can go ahead and uh, ask me the question Since like Mitri has a question Am I right? Okay, so there is one question, is uh, how will this help me on my native profiles? Very good question. So like I mentioned, let's say you have created the whole file, the, the whole model in Pro Engineer, right? And uh, you have some final changes, let's say you release and everything is there, but at the last moment, your hire management is saying that, hey, there are design changes, or let's say your manufacturer says that, hey, this kind of feature, I cannot make it, you have to make this kind of necessary changes. He redlines your design and all whatever uh, you can get the information from that. You can just simply select the feature and and treat that profile just like a step or I just file and you can make changes on the geometry. The good part is that you do not have to deal with parent-child relationship or any dimensions and all the things right over there. You can have just like a freestyle designing kind of thing, uh, designing kind of thing. You can make changes however you want over there and uh, you have your final result right there. Again, if let's say that is the model that you approve, then in future you can go ahead and make the parametric changes if you would like, but at that point of time, it will help you uh, creating your freestyle designing. Hope I answer, hope I uh, answer the question. Are there any other questions? You can raise your hand in the uh, in go to meeting the uh, box or you can ask me the question Mitri somehow uh, I'm not able to I think you have not joined the uh, audio conference, so I have sent you the audio pin. You can join that, or you can type in in the chat box, which is defined, which is uh, uh, provided at the bottom of the go to meeting the dialog box. Another question is that, uh, uh, can I edit these features in the model tree? Yes, definitely. I mean, as I mentioned, all the features are there. If you see on my screen, I can just right click and uh, let me make this activate first. And I can do edit definition. So let's say this is the move I did edit definition. And now, 
I can make changes to that. I can add the value. Let's say I want to make it 0.8 again. I'm sorry, 0 0.08. I meant, and you can have done all that. So yes, you can do all those changes in your model tree. You can just simply right click and you do edit or edit definition, and you will have those changes right there. Again, just like your native uh, Creo or Pro Engineer file. Are there any other questions? Actually, I have unmuted you, so if you have any question, please uh, uh, ask me. Oh, okay. Uh, so, Mitri has a question. I do not see flex uh, uh, modeling option on my Creo menu. Okay. Uh, let me double check on your system. You can uh, you, uh, you can contact me on this email address because it is inbuilt in the basic model, in a basic licensing. So uh, you can shoot me an email and I can check your system, what actually it is in your system, and we can try to figure out that uh, uh, question. Let's check it offline. Again, my contact information is swapnilm at nextel.com. Please send me an email and I'll go ahead and uh, resolve that. All right, so uh, seems like nobody else has any question. Thank you very much, guys, for joining uh, today's Power Hour session. Uh, I would, uh, I'm looking forward to see you on the next Friday. Next Friday, again, we have another interesting Power Session, so please do register for the Power Hour session. And uh, we really provide a lot of information on that. Thank you very much and you all have a great weekend.